Dearly beloved of the Lord, praise God, he, our Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, our Keeper, our Protector, our Provider, the one that sustains life. He gave it and he sustains it. He keeps uh, keeping on with our care. He's our Father. And so let us pray as we dive into his word. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this moment. We appreciate for your goodness. We appreciate for your care. And now as we enter into this moment of the word, we pray the Lord you bless every word that will be coming out of my mouth and every word that you will be reading from your word. Bless us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, it is a pleasure to continue interacting with the word of God, whether it is day or at night, whichever moment. Interacting with it, whether you are reading it by print or using um, your electronic or whether even meditating it on upon the word of God in your mind. And so it is time taken to appreciate God, energizing ourselves with God's word. And so like we have been doing, we shall continue reading more of the people that are in the Bible. The Bible has written a lot about them. They have a story to tell. Some of them are prominent men and women. We have talked about several about them and we shall continue because they are many and we pick our own lessons from them. And just like I've already said, we read about them, we talk about them, we think about them. And so those that did good and they pleased God, what did they do? How did they do it? To live in harmony with God, to please God. And so it is our challenge. It comes as a challenge to us to energize us, to do something good, to say something good, to act in a godly manner. And those that have done, that did, ever did bad, and God was angered by, with them, and they didn't do as expected, what do we learn from them? And so for me, as a person, I pick, I take treasure in God's word, reading about these personalities, reading about these men and women, it encourages me to pick something important to go by. And so that when time comes and I depart from this life, what will, it, what will be said about me that I was able to do, that I was able to say and lift a mark on somebody? Now, this moment, I bring you another personality. Still in the book of Job, we have looked at the book of Job, the book of suffering, the theology of suffering, and the questions that are raised. Uh, we have already talked about the man Job. We have talked about his three friends. And now I bring one obscure character. You know, in the Bible, we have people that are clearly known. They are spoken about all the time. And then there are these ones spoken about less. But that's why we are calling them obscure characters. Not very much well known, but they play the part. Now, in the book of Job, we have this person, his wife, actually nameless. Because they say his wife. The Bible says his wife. This is why his na her, name, her name is not given. But... She's a character in the Bible. When you talk about the sorrow of Job, from beginning to the end, you can never miss talking about this lady. And so I bring her in her own right to share about her. She's a wife, she's a woman, and therefore she has a lesson really that actually somebody somewhere can pick from. Now in chapter two, uh, we talk about, the Bible talks about Job losing the remaining things his wealth and his children and everything else. And so since we're talking about Job's wife, we talk about Job chapter 2, and we shall just read a few verses because we cannot read the entire chapters because of the time. But listen to me. Chapter 2 verse 9. After everything had gone, after his skin had broken, many things had happened, and so... His wife comes in verse 9. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? 
and not accept adversity. In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. And in verse 11, the picture of his three friends come in. Beloved of God, this is a story of this lady. She's called Job's wife. Mrs. Job, as you may like to call her, and she has witnessed everything happening, Job's wealth going, you know, everything, everything, everything. They are, they are heard of whatever they had they owned. The animals all went stolen. Their children die at a go. Their children die at a go. Meaning they remain childless. No children. They remain two. Job himself and this lady, his wife. Everything virtually gone. And look, this woman, I mean, looks at the husband. The Satan has attacked his body. Thankfully, God had stood and instructed, given instructions that the devil could not take Job's life. These are the temptations. This is the theology of suffering that actually has left thousands and millions of theologians, name them, over decades, over centuries, debating something about this suffering. But listen about what this woman goes through. Lost all her children, lost all her wealth, and her husband is wasting away. And so she made a statement they have just been reading. Do you still trust God? Do you still hold fast unto God? Do you still hold onto your integrity? Now, friends, this lady comes as somebody who is hurting, someone frustrated, unbelievable pain. Just consider the situation that she went through, losing virtually everything. And she comes with a response. I know, we keep quoting about it, we keep talking about it, this woman, this woman. Because many times we quote what Job puts to her. You are speaking like one of the foolish women around. But I just desired that you give it a more deeper thought about and think about her situation, the challenge that she has gone through. And then when you draw the conclusion, which I'm not going to give, when you draw the conclusion about her statement, when you draw the conclusion about Job's statement, then you'll have actually internalized the situation in which he was. Now, as a counselor or psychologist of sorts, this was a typical response to trials and temptations. It's a typical response to grief. You see, these are the, some of the questions that arise. Doubt, disbelief, denial, and you, I mean, someone speaks something because of being overwhelmed by the situation. And so you realize that Job's wife's faith was in tatters, was shaken to the marrow, deeply so, and so she comes, man. Maybe, I mean, and, and so there are words that you can use, deny God and die, denounce God, abandon God. You know, it is, it is a statement of, you know, doubt, denial, and all this disbelief and things like that. Now, this is the statement. This is a statement. Actually, she speaks only at this time. When you discover, you discover actually her wife, I mean, his wife, speaks at this moment and she disappears from the scene. But she had made her point and she has left theologians talking. A few statements that actually she made. And so you look at, as people that think deeper into scripture, you look at the context of certain statements that are made and then you draw your conclusions. But as someone who comes to share about this, I just brought it to you 
think about it. How do you respond when suffering comes, when trouble hits? Because we are in a world, you know, full of suffering, you know, trouble, and we get shaken. How do we go about it? How do you respond? And possibly from this, we pick a lesson. As Job's wife makes this statement, what do you learn? What do you pick? How do you respond? Okay, you yourself, how do you respond? Or how can you help somebody respond to a situation that's overwhelming? And so this is something that I thought that I should share with you. Now, how do you minister to a suffering person? Suffering person related to you possibly. How do you minister to a suffering person? Maybe you go to the hospital. Where do you begin? How do you go about it? So friends, this is something that we need to, to think deeply about because I just have already said the world, the times are not easy times at all. And so how do we minister? A suffering person, a suffering spouse, a suffering child, a suffering relative, a suffering friend. How do we begin? Wow, which words do you come up with? Now, and remember, situations like that, we already, you know, we are already overwhelmed, we are over, already in disbelief, we are already agonizing. And so this Job's wife leaves something that we need to keep thinking about because we have to do ministry to agonizing people, suffering people, troubled people, and things like that. We go to the hospitals, you go to homes, and even there could be physical sufferings, but there are also emotional things that happen to us and we get devastated. Now, you who is in attendance, who is helping the person, who is in charge of this person, how do you go about it? So it is something that I just thought that I should leave with you. So suffering is the time of despair and frustration. This is a huge lesson that we can get from this lady. The statement that she makes you discover that actually when suffering comes, it comes along with the frustration, it comes along with despair, comes along with the grief. We pick it from here. And so I thought that actually you, you think deeper that actually suffering is a terrible moment. Sickness is a terrible moment. Death is a terrible moment. Loss of property, whatever it is, is a terrible moment. And so how do you go about it? And so we discover from this the lesson that we pick is that suffering is a time of despair and frustration. And so it depends on how you look at it, on how, you know, you, 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 you respond to it. You know, get back. There are many responses that you can give. Now, David, when you read in the scripture, when his son that he had had with Bathsheba, there, there in the Bible, you'll find it, you know, when the boy was sick, the Bible says that David fasted, prayed, and he drew closer, pleading for the safety, for the health of the child. Now listen to me. That when time comes, the child dies. Now people fear to go and tell David, what will he think? If a child was, since at the time of the child's sickness, he could not eat, he had, you know, removed the kingly robes. He was sitting in the, in the dust on the ground, fasting and praying and trusting and, you know, pleading with God. Now, because of the situation that was, so the servant said, now, if it had been like that, how is it going to be when you tell him that actually the child is now dead? Now, David, David's reaction, I'm talking about the response that you can give when that can be given. It's out of, you know, it just happens. And then you find either word coming or an action exhibited. And so this David, the Bible says, he gets up when he heard. He saw them coming, trying to... Then he said, what has happened? You mean to say that the boy is dead? And then the Bible says that when they told him, he got up to their amazement. You know, removed the rags to their amazement took a bath to the amazement, put some kingly robes to the amazement. And so that was another response. That even when he, the child had died, see that response. Now, the point that I'm making here, brethren, is that suffering is a time of despair 
and frustration and responses vary. So this woman, Job's wife, responds that way. And we don't deny the fact that she was in pain, that she was in despair, that she was in grief. Now, I discovered that this woman did not stand. It was not a phone call if there were phones. If, I mean, at a distance, she did not stand far away there. But listen to me, that this woman was closer to her husband. Now, dearly beloved, it does not shout so much, but I say it here now that Jobu's wife was with him. Now, it brings to me and to you the ministry of presence being there. You know, the words can come, other things can happen, but you are present. Praise the Lord that Job's wife was present with him. Have you ever heard of people who run away when things happen, devastated, grief-stricken, and they take off? You suffer alone there. Poor Job was, they said actually he was using potsard to scratch himself and they pass over, over, over. But the wife saying these things, she was there. And I thought actually this is important, that she stood with her husband in agony. Even when there were things that were spoken, and we quote them many times, that Job said those words many times, but the presence of this lady. So I appeal now. How do you respond? Times come, hard times come, difficult times come. Now Job's wife was there. She spoke whatever she said, and Job retorted the way he retorted, but... I'm emphasizing this, and it challenged me. It still challenges me that when suffering comes, do we still stand with somebody? Do we still speak with somebody? Just speaking. Do we still present ourselves with them when times are hard, when suffering is, is at its peak? We have had men who have dumped their women, their wives, and ran away or chased them away. We have had women who have run away, abandoned. Now, this is a point that I'm making here, friends, that actually it is a ministry that we find from Job's, Job's wife. We also have um, something that actually psychologists will call confronting our own doubts and fears. This woman speaks out and she challenges us Challenges you, challenges me to confront our own doubt. You know, she spoke what, 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 what was, what she was feeling. You know, she never hid it. She spoke out. And so challenging our doubts, our, to confront our doubts, confront our fears. And she spoke out and the husband responded at least as of rebuke. But, you know, spoken and it was a way of, because she had kept it in her, hands, in her heart. She had kept it in her heart, you know, maybe ballooned within there, and the chest was full of disagonizing statements. And when she said it, and Job, thankfully, Job put it back to her. Praise the Lord. Job put it back to her. And from both his wife, Job, his, Job's wife, and Job himself, we pick lessons from there. But the whole thing is, how do we handle, how do we confront agonies? How do we confront doubts when we are afflicted? Now, one other thing that actually you pick is, you know, we need to stand firm in the face of frustration and temptation. And we, we look at this situation. Let us now look at the situation, not necessarily the woman, not necessarily the job, but the entire situation. Here they were in their home, and how do we, I mean, standing firm during the time of frustration, during the time of temptation, they were in their home, and, you know, then these friends come, they find them somewhere. Now, their geographical location remained there, and they were in their home, and these friends came and found them. I find that actually there's something to pick from there. Now, friends, as I turn towards the finish, 
remember that as this woman also says this thing, it's a hard time, like you do first hard time, and all of us do first hard times. But hard times reveal our true hearts. When temptations come, when hard times come, they reveal our true hearts. Because actually, there's something hidden in there. Nobody can see it until you speak it. And so our true hearts are revealed, are revealed during times. You just listen to people when they are hard up. Just listen to people, even Christian believers. The reason why we keep encouraging ourselves, there are people who reach somewhere, I have prayed, 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 I have prayed. As God had my prayer, I have trusted, 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 trusted. And those are some of the things that actually that come different in our hearts. But we pick a lesson from here. That actually, God's timing is, is the best and he answers prayer at his own. But when, it, when the time of trouble is there, you can't even remember that because you will get overwhelmed. But listen to me, friends, that actually hard times reveal our true nature, reveal our true properties within us. And so we need to pick some lesson from this lady. I said I'm not going to mention something that I'm pointing at this, 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 but I'm just spreading it. So actually you learn something, you pick something from there. Now, how do we respond? When trouble comes, not that, remember that, be mindful that, you know, no one likes difficult times. From this situation, it's a difficult time and no one likes it. I don't like it and I always pray, God, help me. I get out today, I come back and it's God's own providence. So this is a lesson that we pick from there and we pray all the time. You know, Job did pray, Job did trust God, but the lessons that we pick from when times change, how do we respond to a situation when our world is seemingly crashing down around us is a question that actually we find in this this story. Do we curse God? Do we abandon God? Do we run away? Or do we bless God? Now it is a point that I wanted to wind up with. And in Revelation chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says, be faithful unto death. Be faithful unto death. This is Revelation 2.10. Be faithful unto death, and the reward awaits. So, my dear friends, my dear, my, my brethren, this is important. 2.10, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will be, you will have tribulation for 10 days. Be faithful the point I'm making. Be faithful until death and I'll give you a crown of life. Now temptations come and Revelation 2.10 does want something there. So my brothers and sisters, may God stand with you that you remain faithful unto death. Job's story did not end in ashes. This is paramount. Job's story did not end in ashes. Glamour, joy, multiplication at the end. Now, Job's wife did mention all those things. And by the way, she disappears from the scene. She says those things. Now, the entire story flows. You know, Job, his three friends, one after another. Job, his three friends, one after another. And then at the end, we discover another person. And at the end, we find this, this joy, this multiplication, that God blessed, these blessings, that God, God blessed Job even more abundantly. Now, who bore children for Job? It is something that this maybe the wife comes back uh, into picture or something. Like, because okay, the, the Bible says that he got more sons and more daughters. By who? They never mentioned that okay, he remarried or something, then the wife went away. Now, those are some of the things, but the end is the point I'm making is that uh, Job ended well. So we only need to be persistent. We only need to be uh, resistant to some of the things that God redeems um, us finally, and we win finally. So friends, Job's wife leaves me something to think about. And even as I wind up, 
to get away, carry a story and ask, how would we have responded? But the thing is, his wife was with him. Very, very important, really, presence. And a few other things. But we know that actually when suffering comes, it overwhelms everyone. So maybe when you are doing your judgment sheet against this lady, how would you do it? But the point is, she leaves some lessons to us, some lessons to you, and so that we keep the theological debate going. But it should not go to deviate us, but the theological debate, whatever we discuss about this woman, should actually channel us into the right way to continue trusting and believing in God. So that we shall be able to answer Job's question that actually when th bad things come, we remain faithful when they are good. We say hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so actually, whether bad or good times, you remain focused, you remain, you know, meditative on God's word. Dear beloved, the God who started this good work in us, continue energizing and encouraging us through this general making. And I pray for you that God makes you stand steady fast in the faith and that you continue giving testimony. And so that actually other people will see and learn something from you while you are still alive, a footmark, where you have a trade that you live and people learn something from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And amen. <music>